Hi hey there once again. In this lesson we're going to take a look at creating uh, essentially a colored alpha channel. Uh, and what this is going to do is allow us to be able to create a selection uh, of different regions of our image within Photoshop so that we can uh, very selectively uh, change the exposure or color adjustments on just the diamond, for example, or just the shank. And uh, this is uh, something that's very common in other uh, sort of like 3D animation pipelines, but isn't uh, really well utilized, I find, in uh, jewelry rendering. So this is a relatively straightforward thing to set up. Um, right now I'm working in uh, Rhino, and I am working specifically with uh, the Brazil renderer for Rhino. So I'm just going to load that up real quick. This is Rhino Gold uh, that I'm working in. It's a, sort of an addition on top of normal Rhino, but uh, you could pretty much follow along with what I'm doing uh, no matter which uh, renderer or system you're using so long as you can create uh, something along the same lines that I'm about to create. So I'm just going to launch my renderer first and I'm going to go into the materials tab of my renderer. And now this is in, in uh, Brazil here for Rhino. This creates a whole bunch of options that are sort of just presets. And presets are great places to start from, but pretty much always I end up adjusting them in some way. I'm not going to go into the presets so much. I'm just going to go into uh, my materials editor. And this is uh, something you'll find in, like I said, pretty much any rendering software or, or uh, you know, modeling software that has a renderer attached to it. And what I have here, I'm just going to move this one off the screen because it's not really relevant anymore. Uh, what I have here is a list of different materials that I've gone through and adjusted and applied custom HDR images to. Um, so I have a white gold, I have a yellow gold that I've created. Uh, and in Brazil I can just easily sort of click and drag them and drop them onto my uh, geometry and whatever I drop it onto it gets attached to. So what I've already done in this scene is attached uh, a yellow gold to the shank. I believe there's white gold attached to the prongs and to the diamond itself I have a diamond material as well. Uh, it's this one here. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the different settings per se of these materials. Suffice it to say that most of these started as a preset that I then modified. And there's also a whole bunch of options and ray tracings and just different objects that you're choosing to incorporate into your scene in terms of the calculations. Uh, and that's specific to Rhino in Brazil for Rhino. Uh, in other softwares you don't have to be quite as pedantic. It does it automatically. So uh, in this case, just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like, when I'm rendering this out, uh, if I render this image, I'm going to take it a second here. So I'm just going to pause the video while this renders. Okay, and that's completed now. Um, I get a very basic file, right? And one of the things I notice, however, is that the background is not perfectly white. And in our particular uh, jewelry creation for our website, we like to have all of our images conform to the same colored background so that pretty much everywhere where there isn't a shadow, it is white. Now, uh, I'm going to show you uh, a kind of a problem that's uh, involved with this if we just use the image natively. So what I'm going to do is just save this image out and I'm just going to put this into, just throw this on my desktop and we're just going to call this, um, how about ring color. I'll save that and I'm going to open up Photoshop real quick. Photoshop is uh, sort of my go-to program for doing any kind of color correction. I don't recommend using paint, it won't really do anything for you, but a free version uh, of Photoshop is basically called GIMP, G-I-M-P, and uh, there are other sort of photo editing softwares that you can uh, use online as well, but Photoshop I really recommend having if you don't have it. It's relatively straightforward to learn and there's a lot of support online to learn its basic functions. Um, I'm going to go through this assuming that you have some degree of knowledge of Photoshop and um, we'll, we'll go from there. So I'm just going to open up that image, so file open, and find that on my desktop and I called that ring color, so I bring that in. All right, so if I were to go through here and start making some adjustments, I might uh, want to just take my background here and set it to white, right? 
So I could do that by applying a, an adjustment layer, specifically a levels adjustment. And I would be able to apply a, an adjustment where I take my um, color picker for the white point of the image, whatever I click on now, uh, that's going to be determined as maximum white. So this is towards white, this is pretty close to white. Um, if I clamp basically this value here to maximum white, this is what I get. And you notice that the entire image is basically increased in contrast there. Um, really it's sort of more down here that I want to get rid of. I kind of want to get rid of that shadow underneath. And um, yeah, that's coming along. But you'll notice that it's actually uh, pushing the values everywhere in the image. So it's pushing it not just on the background but all across the ring. And you can really see this if I turn this on and off. I'm starting to lose some of the color information here in the diamond and in the metal as well. It's not too bad in this image but I have started to lose it a bit. And I've also lost some of the color information as well. So you notice it's a little bit bluer here and a little bit more golden uh, before. So uh, this is what we call sort of a global color adjustment. I want to be able to go in and have a much more specific localized color adjustment. And in order to do that, I need to go back into uh, Rhino. Okay, so now what we want to do in Rhino is to create a material uh, that is essentially flat shaded. And this is going to allow us to start piecing together our color selection mat or color selection alpha. And all the materials that we see uh, that we've used so far end up creating a sense of, uh, you know, diffusion and specularity and three-dimensionality. That would be these kinds of materials here. And ultimately what we want to create are these flat shaded materials that essentially when they're applied to the image, for example, if I just drop this onto the diamond, and I were to render this again, say I drop the, let's just say I drop blue onto the diamond, I drop green onto the shank, I drop red, sorry, I drop green onto the uh, prongs, I drop red onto the shank, and I drop, uh, let's say, black onto the background, right? If I were to render that now and see what that looks like, I get this flat shaded image which is going to be a lot easier to uh, select. So I'm just going to hold, hold that there for a second. I'll come back to that in just a moment. So I'll just clone that out. Put both of those down. How do I go about creating one of these flat shaded uh, shaders in Brazil for Rhino? It's not too difficult, but there are a few settings to keep track of. And essentially, the settings that we're about to change, they're all basically designed to uh, get rid of any of the highlights and any of the shadows. So I'm going to create a new um, material. I'll just create that as a Chrome material. It's sort of one of the defaults. I'm going to come in here, and on this Chrome material, I'm going to go up all the way to the top. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is turn off Generate Caustics. I do not want any caustics to be created. I'm going to change my filter and my environment to the same color. So this is going to be whatever color appears here. So let's do one that appears uh, cyan turn the environment on and I'll set that to the exact same color. Um, I'm going to come down and turn on reflection decay control and basically I don't want there to be any reflections in this scene essentially so I'm going to change the end value here to zero and I'm going to change the color to white. There we go. Um, and another big important one here is to change my highlight parameters uh, from Fong to none because I don't want there to be any highlights. And I think with that, that is all we need to do. Let's have a look. Let's test this out and see how successful we are. Let's just drag that into the scene. Drop that onto the diamond again. Let's just see what we get. Yep, that looks pretty good. So that's gone through, that's done it. So once you've created one of these, uh, you could easily save it out, save to file, save it out as a um, uh, some kind of custom name. And I usually save these out saying uh, that they're a mat of some kind. So uh, do I have one saved out like that already? Yeah, I have one for mats, you know, black mat, red mat, white mat. And then if I need to, I can just um, right click and load from file. I can load one of those in and I could just go in and essentially simply change the two colors here and I have all the other parameters already set and they're just kind of ready to go. So that's a really nice and efficient way to do it. So let's just not take this particular image, let's take this one that we did before. 
and save this out. Save as. And we're going to save this as ring uh, alpha. Okay. So if we go back to Photoshop now and let's open up ring alpha. All right. So what I'll do is I'm just going to hit Control A to select everything, Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. So this is this sits directly over our image, perfectly in line. Big important thing is that between you know rendering the first image and rendering the alpha for it to not move the camera, <laughs> otherwise it's not going to match up and it's not going to be you know you're going to have to do it all over again. So um, let's just take a step backwards. I'm going to delete out this levels adjustment and we're going to take a step backwards. What I want to be able to do now is to um, select the background separately, to select the uh, shank and head and diamond separately. And what I've done here, I've done this in a very specific way. I made the background black, which was the floor in my scene. And I did that for a reason. It's because black doesn't have any color to it whatsoever. And therefore, if I go into the channels section of my palette here, you'll see that I have just uh, the section that contributes to red, just the section that contributes to green, and just the section that contributes to blue, which is quite effective. Um, and this way I can easily uh, move through here and differentiate between um, what is uh, the shank versus the head versus the diamond. And if I were to come in here and make a selection, and the way I can make a selection is to hold down the control key and click on uh, one of these channels, control click on red. Now I have a selection that is isolated to the red area. And if I come back to my layers, briefly turn off the alpha here that we have, and create, let's say we create a uh, exposure adjustment, because I tend to work with exposure quite a bit. Um, now if I make this adjustment here, you'll notice that this adjustment is isolated only to the shank because it's being guided by this um, this mat channel, or this alpha channel. All right, and that alpha channel was uh, created by selecting only the red area here. Okay, um, so I can very easily sort of make that bigger, that brighter or darker. I generally just kind of pull up the brightness a little bit and start to play with the gamma a little bit. Um, I can come back in here again, and if I wanted to. Uh, in the channels, go and just control click on the green selection now and come back here, turn that off, uh, create a separate exposure. Okay, and now this is only going to affect the, uh, the head here, the prongs, right? Then get those nice to where I want them, where they're really nice and visible. Turn this back on, control click on blue, and create an exposure adjustment for the diamond. Right. So I can, you know, this is one way to make sure that the diamond is as bright and as shiny as you want uh, without necessarily making everything else overpowered in your scene as well. So each one of these different sections of the ring now, we are controlling separately as opposed to before where we were controlling it only through a single, um, you know, uh, or I should say one layer here would affect the entire image. Now we're affecting individual parts of the image based on our color map. So what about if we want to get that background to be white? Okay, that one's a fairly straightforward thing to do. What we can do is come back into our channels, and if I control click uh, on the red channel and hold down control and shift at the same time, control shift on the green channel, click, control shift click on the blue channel, you'll notice that every time I do that, I'm adding to the selection. So if I just really quickly go back and say control click on red, I have the red selection. Hold down control shift and click on green, I'm going to add to that selection whatever was part of the green area. Control shift and click on blue. Now I've added the blue area as well. So basically I have the entire ring here. Okay. So if I were to go in here now and take that levels adjustment, I have basically anything that you see in white is going to be affected. Anything in black is not going to be affected. So right now if I made any kind of changes here, it's affecting only the ring. So I don't want it to affect the ring, I only want it to affect the background. So if I hit uh, Control-Alt-Z a couple times, let's see, that's how to undo here, Control-Alt-Z. Um, I'm going to go back to where that selection was still active. I want to actually invert the selection. Um, there's a number of ways you can do that. You can go up to Select, 
and inverse, or you can just follow the shortcut keys, which I always use, which is just shift control I. So shift control I. Now the selection is inverted, so it's not affecting the ring at all, it's affecting everything else. So I can come in here, go into my adjustment layers, and click levels, and you'll see now that the ring is actually blacked out and the background is in white. I'll go grab my white point, click down here like I did before, and now that affects the background, but it has no effect whatsoever on the ring itself. So the ring has been isolated, and it's a much better way to control this image. All right, um, so that's one way to go about uh, creating some basic color uh, selection mats uh, for Brazil and Rhino. Uh, there's a variety of other softwares out there uh, and other render engines where creating the mats, of course, is going to be dependent on um, you know the mechanics of that particular rendering engine. But ultimately, the idea is the same. You want to create uh, a different color for either different parts of the ring that you want to handle separately, or maybe a different color for each different type of material, depending on where that is. Um, so, for instance, if this had been a white gold, sorry, a, sorry, a yellow gold um, shank and a yellow gold head, I might have just applied red to both, for example. What if, for example, you have a color that doesn't fit nicely into the red, green, or blue channel? Because some of these colors, like that cyan we created, is going to be a combination of green and blue, sort of 50% green, 50% blue. Uh, and as a result, we're going to not be able to so easily uh, select it here. You can also go ahead and make selections based on solid colors by just going up to the magic wand tool, which is shortcut W on the keyboard. And so long as you have the color mat visible, you can click anywhere that would have your uh, red in this case, or how about green? Um, because green's a little bit better example. Green isn't solid everywhere, so I would have to click uh, here um, to get this part of the green, and then hold down shift and click on the other sections. Uh, so long as I'm holding down shift, I'm adding to that selection, right? And then I could just turn off uh, the visibility of that particular layer, go down, create an exposure adjustment or a levels adjustment, etc., uh, and, and continue on that way. So, more manual way to approach it. Either way is totally appropriate. Um, I tend to use channels a bit more because I'm more comfortable with them. And yeah, so um, that's going to bring this particular tutorial to a wrap. Hopefully, that's been of help. Please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments section below, and I will do my best to, uh, to come back and, and give you some replies. I'm going to also try to do a video uh, involving Keyshot, and maybe, if we're also very lucky, maybe uh, with Maxwell for Maya as well. Thank you very much. Have a great day.